Hey y'all, I'm Jamie Mayfield and I'm an independent sock knitting machine instructor. So thanks for joining me. I've gotten myself a hold of a Laguerre 400. And you know, I've always said it, you Laguerre girls are a tight knit bunch of people. So I got a hold of one and let's just take a look and see how this baby works. Okay. So it's, it's a closed cam machine, meaning that you can't see what's going on in here. See these little guys right here? See how they lift up the needles? See how it lifts up those needles? That's what makes the, the stitches form. The needle goes up, yarn lands in it, the needle goes down, and a stitch is formed. Now, if you use all cylinder needles, that's going to be stockinette. You know, I've sold a lot of machines to a lot of people and, and it always amazes me at the amount of people that want to get a machine and sit down and make a sock. Well, I don't care how long you've been knitting or how many machines you've knit on, every machine is a little bit different. So you kind of have to get to know the machine before you can actually make a sock. So I thought you guys might like to, to join me and see how this Laguerre 400 works. So I have a setup bonnet. I'm going to set that down in the cylinder. And it happens to be one of my favorite kinds of setup bonnets because I made it with fishing line. Oh, and hey, I wanted to remind you guys, if you like my videos, um, you can watch me on Sock TV where I have five HD cameras pointing at me all the time. But if you would like and subscribe to this channel, the Jamie Mayfield channel, I would gratefully appreciate it. So what I'm doing is I'm putting loops around the cylinder and I'd like to put them around evenly. Now this is a 72 cylinder and my setup bonnet only has 30 loops because it's a setup bonnet for a 60 cylinder. So I'm just trying to space them out evenly and that's okay. You don't have to have the number of loops. So, here's my waste yarn because we have to get the machine threaded. Now, I know there's an easier way to do this, but like I said, I'm just getting used to and figuring out this machine. Now, I know that this type of yarn delivery system with the spring, the tensioner, it's the kind that's set up to, have to where you have to knit with the spring on all the time. But since I don't have my yarn in the threaded into the machine, there's nothing for it to pull against. So let's go ahead. Yeah, that went where it always goes. Let's pull this in. Drop the tail in. That's a little excessive on the tail, so I'm going to scoot it back a little bit. I'm just going to pull it back. You know, you have to have your yarn wound into some sort of a cone so that you can use it from the outside. So I'm going to crank forward until I can hang the rest of my loops. And now I'm going to put this weight on. I'm not going to use all the weights. I'm just going to use two of them because I'd like to do this with as little weight as possible. My cameraman has been out doing bee work, so I bet you he's got a bunch of ticks on him that are crawling around because he's fidgety. He'd also be my husband. Now see how that's going like that? That is what you call a hot mess. So what I need to do to get out of this hot mess, see, look is I need to do provide an additional amount of pull down over there because the weight on the bottom of the on the bottom of the setup bonnet that's what causes the stitches to form. Okay. So if I let go of it and I keep trying to knit, guess what? There's no pull down right here, so there's never going to be it, it's not going to repair itself. Okay, so we've got to go until we recover from that hole before we ever try to start a project. 
Oh, hey, you know what? I forgot to engage the heel spring. Just knitting forward. This baby's just knitting like a dream. And I also forgot to put my yarn through my light. It's always something, isn't it? You'd think this was my first rodeo. Okay. So now let's engage the heel spring. Make sure we've got all our ducks in a row. Get my light centered over the cylinder. Just gonna knit this through. All right. So we're cooking with gas now. I gotta start working on a project for my SOC TV program. And so since we've come to an easy spot, we're gonna talk about something. Okay, all machines are marked with half marks, okay? This machine has red half marks right here. That simply means that there's 36 needles on this side, 36 needles on this side. There's only one fin marked, okay? So, if I'm going to change over to a project yarn, I'm gonna, I've always, the other thing that we need to realize too is that there's always gotta be a number one stitch. Okay, right now, this one right in front of the right side half mark, that's usually number one, but since the camera is pointing over here, I'm gonna make this needle number one. And we're gonna do a one needle hug. So when needle number 72 closes, see it back there? When that closes, we're gonna break the yarn. Ooh, you know what? We should, we should tie on project yarn. That's what we should do because then we don't have to pull it through. I have this really pretty project yarn. Now, you'll notice that it's wound into a cake. See the cake? It doesn't have yarn wound on the bottom of the cake. So this is gonna be okay to use as an outside pull ball. Okay, I don't wanna use it from the inside. And all I'm gonna do is tie this on. Let's see, does it go through that hole? It does, doesn't it? Never spit on your yarn, that's gross. Okay, so I wanna tie a knot. This is something I have to get used to because I don't have a slotted yarn carrier to feed it into anymore. So what I have to do is see how needle number 72 closes, is already closed. We're gonna pull this in. I'm gonna pull it in in front of needle number one. Okay, and I'm gonna give myself a nice long tail. But now, actually we're gonna pull it in in front behind needle number one so that I'm hugging the yarn on needle number one, I'm hugging it with the waist yarn in front, the project yarn in back. All right. And then we're going to practice making a tube. Hey, thanks for joining me. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.